Today we will be looking into the lung histology. First we will look into the pathway of the air towards the lung. So this is the cavity going downwards and forming two channels one going to the stomach other to the lung. This is the nasal cavity, the oral cavity and this is the epiglottis which covers the trachea while we are eating. This is the esophagus which is going towards the stomach and this is the larynx which is going towards the lung. These are the cartilage rings which forms the trachea. And the trachea will divide inside the lung. These are the two lungs present. The right lung and the left lung. And the heart is present in the notch of the left lung and the diaphragm below the lung. Now the trachea will divide and divide inside the lungs. We will look into the division of the trachea carefully. This is the trachea which has cartilaginous support and the trachea divides the first division these are called primary bronchi now the primary bronchi will divide again and forms secondary bronchi and the secondary bronchi will again divide and forms the tertiary bronchi. The tertiary bronchi can also divide again or forms the alveolar sac. Before entering the alveolar sac, the tube is called bronchiole. And this is the alveolar sac and each round structure is called alveolus and many of the structures are called alveoli and many alveoli forms a alveolar sac all happening inside the lung now the alveolar sac is surrounded by many blood vessels this is the alveolar sac the blood vessel carrying the blood from the body which is rich in carbon dioxide which has to be exchanged in the air of the lung. This vessel is bringing the blood so it is called artery and the pulmonary artery as related to lungs and this vessel will carry the blood from the lung towards the body and it has oxygen rich blood in it as it is carrying blood away that's why it is called vein and this is called pulmonary vein as related to lungs From the trachea to the beginning of the alveolus, this region is called conduction zone as the air is being conducted throughout this zone. And in the alveolar sac, the, ox the gaseous exchange occurs, so it is called respiratory zone. The alveolar sacs. Now we will look into the cells of the different region. The cells in the trachea, there are few types of cells. 
in this region. The first type I am discussing is columnar ciliated epithelium. These are columnar cells which has cilia. The cilia can trap some particles and also the cilia bit and push the mucus layer upwards as we have to keep the lung dry. But this mucus also traps some particles such as dust particles. Now these are goblet cells. These cells release the mucus. This mucus helps in capturing pathogens, dust, etc. Now these cells are basal cells. These are stem cells. These can give rise to other cells. Next cell is DNES. These are endocrine cells, can release hormones. Below the cell layer, there are few more layers and the below layer is thickest in this region and will be thin in going downwards. Below the cell, the layer having some blood supply and some tissues, this is called lamina propria and the layer lamina propria along with the cells called mucosa layer. After the mucosa layer, it is the submucosa layer which has blood and nerve supply. The submucosa layer. Below the submucosa layer, there is the cartilage present. This layer is called adventitia or cartilage layer. As cartilage is present in trachea. Going downwards, at this region, no cartilage is present, so adventitia will be absent. And the cells of this region are cuboidal in shape. Another type of shell is also present here. These are called Clara cells. The function of the Clara cell is to release surfactant and to detoxify the air coming inside this or passing through this. Below the cellular layer there is blood supply and some smooth muscle and the layer is very thin. Now looking into the cells of the alveolus, this is one alveolus, the cells of the alveolus are very thin and squamous epithelial. These are thin to help in exchange of the air and these cells are called type 1 pneumatocytes. They are squamous in nature. The alveolus have blood vessels surrounding it or the blood capillaries. The oxygen cross the thin layer of squamous epithelial and goes to the blood and carbon dioxide comes from the blood to the air of the alveolus. Other cells are also present but type 1 pneumatocyte forms 95% of the population. Another type of cell in the alveolus is type 2 pneumatocytes. These cells are surfactant releasing cells. It releases surfactant 
which helps in keeping the walls of the alveolus separate while expiration of the air. It helps in the wall detachment. Now the another kind of cells are macrophages. These are pneumatic macrophages also called dust cells. These destroy the pathogens in the air present in the alveolus. Now the whole pathway, the trachea, the bronchi and everything is covered by smooth muscle layer. This smooth muscle helps in contraction that is also helps in expiration and inspiration of air.